On Christmas Day 2015, I packed up two suitcases, grabbed Elvis and my Vitamix blender, I flew to LA one-way ticket, and I never looked back. Hey beautiful, thank you for coming back if you are new here. My name is Caswell, come on in. I have a seat right here for you to sit in. Actually, Elvis is right there, so maybe you can't do that. But right now, I am where you never see me, and that is behind the steering wheel of a car, because if you know me, you know I don't drive. I've never had a license. I have no interest in driving a car. I just don't need the stress. I've been fine without one. However, I do enjoy watching story times and things like that when people are talking from their car. For some reason, it feels a little bit more intimate, and I just want to switch up the environment. So that's why I'm here right now. Elvis is right there. I tried leaving the house, and he looked at me like, please take me with you. So he's right. Do you want to come here? Say hi real quick. Then you're going back. Come here. Oh, you just want some love, don't you? All right, that's enough. Go back to your bed. Go back to your bed. Okay, fine. You can say it. Fine. Just... All right. <laughs> so today I'm going to talk to you about why I personally left New York. But before I do, get into the daddy department hoodie. Uh, if you follow me on Instagram, internet, if you follow me... If you follow me on Instagram and anywhere else, you know that this is my new business. I started a fashion line, which isn't very fashionable. So check out daddydepartment.com. The link is below. Also, I'm going to tell you real quick that this month when you buy something from Daddy Department, 10% of the proceeds goes to the Animal Rescue Mission, which helps find uh, homes for doggies and cats. Ain't that right? So you know I had to support... I don't think I've ever talked about why I left New York. Definitely not publicly. Even to this day, I have people see me if I'm out DJing. They're like, oh, are you just here for the weekend? I'm like, no, I live here. The thing about it is time in New York goes by so fast. I go there this week and people be like, oh, didn't I just see you a month ago? I'm like, no, that was in 2015. First, I want to say I love New York. I am a New Yorker. I lived in New York for longer than I lived anywhere, like almost 20 years. I love, 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 love New York. It is my kind of city. I love the vibration of New York. I love the fashion of New York. I mean, so, I mean, when I when I was thinking about leaving New York, sometimes I would want to cry just because I love New York so much. But it was time to go. Now, of course, there are things I don't particularly like about New York and things that make me less compatible with New York, like the weather or the fact that the MTA is trash. But those weren't reasons I left New York. And when I was thinking about why I left New York and what really persuaded me to leave, when it comes down to it, it's money. At that time in my life, I felt like I was always making the decision of, am I going to pay rent on time or am I going to invest in my career? You know, I started to make more and more videos like in my apartment apartment and not being able to get spaces and pay for things I wanted to pay for because it always goes to rent. Part of that has to do with the fact that I had a boyfriend that I broke up with and I kicked him out so then I was paying the entirety of the rent so that didn't help but it was just always hard to stay on top of things and I know so many people in New York that they're up all night worrying about how they are going to pay the rent. So Money has so much to do with it, and that's always connected to rent. If you live in New York, that's always on your mind. It's like, make it rent, because at the end of the day, and no one can argue with me on this, housing in New York City is a legalized scam. Let's just keep it a buck, okay? It is a legalized scam. Let me tell you, if I live in a one-bedroom apartment, and my one-bedroom apartment is $2,700 a month, I'm paying $2,700 then that means that my apartment should look like it cost $2,700. Do you know what I'm saying? That means that I should have more than one electrical outlet in each room. True story. I shouldn't have to worry about someone coming to my building and stealing my clothes from the dryer. It means I should have an elevator that works more than five days a week. It means I shouldn't have some raggedy kids selling Lucy's in the lobby. Just like, you know, $2,700 is a lot of money. I don't deserve this stress. Most people I know that live in New York and stay there have an amazing deal on rent or typically have rent control. For about seven years, I lived in a rent controlled apartment. I moved into my friend Michael's apartment where he had lived since the 80s and I paid the entire rent because he was doing me a big favor at letting me move in at the time because I was almost homeless. And I think rent was around $400. But rent control or not, 
you get what you pay for, all right? Like, I had a landlady that only turned on the heat when it snowed. And I'm not lying, like it would be freezing cold. And it was so drafty, the building was so drafty, it was like made out of popsicle sticks and Elma's glue, you know? Like people would come over uh, in the winter time and I'd be like, oh yeah, keep your jackets on. Future Casual here, just reminding you to like, subscribe, and while you're at it, have a sip of water. Stay hydrated, baby. The landlady was so cheap, she had the thermostat locked up on the wall with a lock in it, but I figured out how to stick a safety pin through the grate and like slowly turn. So I would have to do this Mission Impossible shit just so I could have heat and go to sleep. I mean, it was just crazy. The building was so shifty, and I mean that literally, like my apartment was slanted. One time, me and my roommate measured it, and it was slanted seven inches from one side to one side. Now, we lived in a railroad studio apartment, and if you don't know what that is, it's when, it's like a long studio. So uh, if you are in the kitchen, you have to walk through the bedroom to get to the living room, or if you're in the bedroom, you walk through like a bedroom to get to the bathroom or something like that. So it wasn't as much like an apartment as it was a clubhouse, <laughs> You know, but I appreciated living there. I made a lot of videos there. I made ice cream chuck there. I made watch my mouth there. I made no selfie control. A couple others. I gotta say, New York was really good to me. It's where I started working in nightlife. It's where I was able to connect with a lot of creatives, where I met my manager, got on Peace Biscuit Records, you know, worked with West End Records. You know, I was, I, I did re, I did really well for myself in New York. In New York, we did good for each other. Originally, I just wanted to leave for the winter. The winter time really depresses me. And I remember I was just had warm winter fantasies all the time. Like I had a plan, like I was trying to figure out a way that just for the winter time, like just from like November to April, I wanted to move to like Miami or to LA or someplace warm. So I was trying to get someone to move into my place using um, Airbnb and shit. And everyone that hit me up was a hooker or I couldn't trust them or, you know, I knew there was something shady about it. And then I uh, literally on Christmas day, I woke up by myself and I was like, this. I truly felt that even, even though I love New York, at that point in my life, at that time, I felt like I got all I could get out of it. And I felt like now it was taking shit from me. You know what I mean? Okay, you're gonna raise the price of the MTA again, but there's no L train on the weekends. Okay, my rent is going up again, but the elevator's still broken. Now, like I said, I was originally just gonna take a break from New York, but when I got to LA and I felt the warm sun hitting my face in January, it did something. It definitely gave me a new perspective. I'm like, oh, this is my winter now. Okay, I'm feeling this. When people ask me if I love New York, I say, F yes, I love New York. I love New York. I will always love New York. As a matter of fact, I can't wait till I can buy a place in New York so I can be bi-coastal. Like, that's my dream. When people ask me if I love LA, the first thing I always say is, I love my life in LA. Yeah, you know, I really love my life in LA. You know, I have I have a beautiful huge apartment. I have a studio in the apartment. I have so much space. I got a pool in the back. I love my neighborhood. I love palm trees. I love sunsets. And what I really love about LA was that it was a change. I really, really needed a change. And this is so on the opposite end of the spectrum. This is the perfect change I needed. So what I love about I love my life here. I'm just it's like no stress. It's no stress. I love the easy breezy lifestyle. I'm feeling it. I am feeling it and I, you should try it sometime. Now, is it a little boring compared to New York? Yes, but I'm okay with a little boring. All right, well, Elvis definitely wants to get out of the car and I think I've said everything I have to say. So I hope you enjoyed this little chit chat we had from behind the steering wheel. I'm gonna go upstairs and edit. As always, I hope you learned something. Big kiss, baby.